tell us a little bit about how long you've worked together and how long you've danced together. <laughs> in um, 2000, I saw a little clip on the news um, of Pierre teaching some kids in the Bronx. And I tracked him down and I optioned his rights, which became a movie called Take the Lead, starring Antonio Banderas. And that was the story of when Pierre went into the public schools of New York to teach inner city kids to ballroom dance in 1994. Now, if you remember, in 1994, ballroom dancing was not cool. There was no dancing with the stars, and they thought he was insane. It was really difficult for him, but against all odds, he started with 30 reluctant kids, and he's now taught over 400,000 kids in the system. Amazing, right? So knowing the power of the program and the unbelievable power of Pierre, when he called to say he was going to fulfill his lifelong dream, I said, I'm going with you. So now we get to the point where you, are, you go to Jaffa. How do you begin to find schools? How do you begin to get anybody interested in doing this? I felt that I did some good with the children in, in New York City. I used to be very shy, very timid, half-tooth, etc. It did a lot of good for me. And being half Palestinian, I thought I would like to give a gift of dance to the children. I had a woman by the name of Miri Shahaf Levy who had seen another film of our program, Dancing Classrooms, called uh, Mad Hot Ballroom. So she came and visited me and said, like, I'd like to take the program to Israel. I said, yes, OK, lovely. But only if I could bring the two communities, the Arabs and the Jews, to dance together. Her eyes opened, her ears opened wider, and we became friends. And then when it was the right time, she's the one that helped find the five schools. Actually, there were two other schools that we tried, Arab schools, that could not handle it. So they said no. But we had five schools, and that's, that's how it started. But, but I also have to say that there was one Arab father yeah. who was dead against the idea. His daughter was not going to be in the program. So we sent Pierre in to talk to him. And um, at the end of the conversation, because Pierre could show him all of the statistics and the success stories of the New York schools and how it changes the kids. It's not just ballroom dance. It changes them academically. It teaches them life skills. They learn confidence, self-esteem, etiquette, self-respect, respect for your partner. One doesn't preclude the other. But most importantly, they do better academically. And this father wanted his kid to have as good a chance as any of the other kids. So he came on board. He got turned around, and then he did PR for us and got all the other parents to bring their kids into the program. It's one thing to bring kids together in a New York City school, but when you have Muslims who have been taught and you, who are not to dance with the opposite sex, you couldn't have done this, for instance, with an Orthodox Jewish school. They would not dance together. So how is it to convince somebody that it is OK, even though all of their cultural training is against that. You are asking them to go against their training. What saved the day is that I speak Arabic. But I think the Arabic word is chutzpah. For you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I lived in Brooklyn also. The international um, word. <laughs> um, but I speak Arabic with a Palestinian accent. And so it's not an Iraqi accent or a Syrian accent. And that was the local dialect there, you know? And that I, bel I know this is what helped. My, my big thing is for the uh, Palestinian Israeli communities is that I wanted them to be, have a choice to be on the world stage. The, small, the world is getting smaller. And if you can stand up straighter, by having to dance in a correct way, you have to stand straight. These are muscular memories that stay with you for life. And then you go and shake hands with a person. You're going to travel. And this is the international universal stage that I would like them to be a part of. And the Jewish people, didn't re they were reluctant to having their children dance with the Arabs because it's a lower class for them. But somehow, again, it, well, how would say, doing well at school, doing better at school. And, and for a child, once you come there, you really can't give up on them because you scar them for life. And um, it, 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 was, it was, I mean, they were, what were they doing? Spitting at each other at the beginning? Yeah. Kicking mean, each other? They're 10 years old and they hate each other. They don't even know why. I mean, we, have, we don't have the same problems in New York City, but, and wherever we are, 
but all of the children at that age cover and oh, the cooties, 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 you know? <laughs> right, regardless. But, right. Right. but, but uh, the truth is racism, segregation, and prejudice are global issues. Yeah. They're in Minnesota, they're in the Bronx, and they're in Jaffa. This was an extreme case, so we could dramatize it. Diane, you were telling me that all of the children have seen this now. Talk okay. a little about that. So we opened the film in Tribeca, and then we went immediately the next week to open the film. We were the opening night film in Dhaka Aviv which was in the port of Tel Aviv. That's the documentary film festival? Yes, right. in, in, uh, in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. And so we had all the kids come see the film, and none of them had seen it, and we were really nervous yeah. because, you know, it's really personable, personal to show footage of yourself in, you know, the therapist's office and all the kids hating you, and we were so nervous for, for Noor and, you know, Lois being the sperm baby. I mean, you know, there's all this personal information. So we sat with them, and them, yeah, one by we were, one. you know, and l helping them to sort of process it. And I don't know that they really got it, mm -hmm. but then the next day, Noor was walking down the street in Jaffa, and everybody came up to her and said, Oh my God, you were incredible in the movie. So she became like a mini movie star, <laughs> and she's really proud of it. And, uh, you know, I think they really they love it now.